Okay, I've been seeing some great chatter on Twitter. Keep it up, hashtag AWE 2016. Our next speaker is Marcus Weller, co-founder and CEO of Scully Inc., the makers of the world's first smart motorcycle helmet. In his talk today, Marcus will be looking at the challenges, opportunity, and future of enhancing ability through augmented reality. Please join me in welcoming Marcus to the stage. Hi, everyone. This is kind of an interesting experience because uh, I spoke here a couple of years ago, and there were, um, let's say, a lot less compelling um, prototypes and concepts in the uh, exhibit hall. And I think what we're seeing now is this really exciting kind of development happening. Um, back in 2012, it was, uh, it was a totally different scenario. Um, so before I get into this too far, let me tell you a little story. So back in 2010, I was riding along on a motorcycle that I rented in Barcelona. And I was on my way to this appointment, and I looked to my right to read a street sign. But because I was doing that, I didn't notice that this little red smart car in front of me had completely slammed on the brakes. So by the time I noticed it, I was smashing into the back of this car totaled my bike, totaled my ego, and my sense of invincibility. And flash forward to May of 2012. May of 2012, I had this exact flashback dream of that day that I was on the motorcycle. But the difference was that I had these GPS maps that were floating out in front of me like a hologram. And because they were floating there, showing me these maps, I wasn't looking around for the street sign. So I saw the car in front of me slam on the brakes. I swerved around, I didn't get in the accident. And I remember that feeling being so cool, it woke me up out of a dead sleep. And I immediately pulled up my laptop to buy this, this helmet that had this heads up display in it. And I looked on Amazon, eBay, Google, I looked everywhere, even Alibaba, and this is May of 2012. And obviously I didn't find anything. And I couldn't believe it. We'd put a man on the moon, and we've done all these cool things, but I somehow couldn't find this, this product anywhere. So I realized that if I was going to have this, I probably was going to have to build it myself. And so later I called my dad, and I told him that, you know, it was later that day, I told him that I'd had this dream and that I wanted to um, maybe build one. He said, stop what you're doing right now. File a patent. And so... Um, that's exactly what I did about seven days later. That was the first of many um, and the beginning of a really interesting journey. But before I tell you too much, let's go for a ride. Scully, play music. It's a paradigm shift in automotive or and, uh, uh, motorcycle helmet technology. And the helmet really does everything. It's a helmet that I think I could wear with my sport bike, my chopper, or my bagger, and not have to worry about not looking cool. This is like a little godsend for me. <laughs> it's going to be a game changer. It's going to be the helmet of choice. I can't wait to put it on a ride. <laughs> yeah, it's a dream. <laughs> What you'll notice here is 
is something a little more subtle than, than all of the sort of iconography. It's that this is a shift from focusing on the technology and overlaying things on the physical world to focusing inward on the human experience of trying to navigate a highly dynamic environment. And so what we're doing at Scully is we're focusing on cognitive load, trying to reduce the cognitive load of cognitively complex or dynamic situations. It's what the military calls situational awareness technology, and it's within a field of human factors that many of you are probably familiar with. These, these cognitive ergonomics, if you will, um, allow, a, uh, allow a designer to, to build a product that has the human mind and how it works and how it interacts with the world at its core. The challenge with a lot of products has been that they have a very fragmented experience. So a little bit about what the helmet does and how it works is it has a 180 degree blind spot camera and it has, of course, a photochromic visor that allows the heads up to display to be very visible in all conditions. So it automatically modulates the amount of ambient light that's coming in through the visor. Um, it also has a heads up display uh, which shows the turn by turn GPS navigation and of course that's focused at infinity so there's no accommodation necessary. The intelligent sound system has voice recognition and voice control, makes it very, very easy to use. In addition to that, it has very premium materials that comprise the overall product to give a very premium experience. Um, above all else, uh, it has the Scully Synapse platform, and that's really a platform that's focused at reducing cognitive load for the users, and that incorporates our voice command and, and the, some of the other features. So as I talked a little bit about this, this aspect of cognitive load and trying to reduce the, the cognitive load, the, the classic counterexample to this is what the iPhone became. So originally it was intended to be something very simple that you could get somewhere in four clicks or less, and what, we've, what it's become is something that's been become very, very fragmented, so you have to do many, many clicks to do basic simple tasks like listen to the music in your car and then navigate somewhere. And so at Scully, we're fusing all those features together and using contextual computing to recognize what you want and what information to serve to you when you need it. But the fragmentation of user experience isn't the only main challenge for people working in augmented reality right now. What they're going to experience and what we did uh, over the last couple of years is um, the regulatory aspect. So DOT, ECE, if you're going to use it in a transportation context, FCC, UL. This is a little uh, clip that shows you some of the stuff we've been doing to that end. I cringe every time I see that, just hundreds of thousands of dollars of prototype equipment being smashed and destroyed. But that's, that's part of the process, right? Um, but there's a big opportunity in this too. It creates a barrier to entry, it makes it difficult to build and difficult to enter. But what we're seeing a lot is that we tend to focus on the technology, the hardware itself, instead of the human for which we're building, for whom we're building. And, and that's, that's a bit concerning because it's not about the hardware per se. We have to focus on this user experience challenge and shifting the focus from just focusing on the technology to what does this technology allow me to do? What superhuman capabilities can this provide me? And I think that's one of the most interesting aspects that's been overlooked is that we end up sacrificing really important things like form factor um, or utility just to pursue a linear path towards certain types of optics technologies or um, other types of hardware. And I think the key thing for us to figure out right now at this stage or this juncture of development in AR is how do we reinvent the user experience to be something that is more consistent with how I make sense of and operate in and think and perceive the world. 
This also opens up new opportunities for us um, when we focus on the human to build a platform that has application to broader contexts. So for Scully, our initial product, the, the motorcycle helmet, the AR1, led us to develop other types of methodologies and leverage other methodologies for optics to develop technology for other applications. By reducing cognitive load, you increase safety and you increase the human performance across contexts. So that's something that's transportable to other types of products. So not only does it make sense for the human, it's also m more economical if you're trying to build a company around it. What's interesting is that I mean, in the future, you know, the military uses augmented reality technology and has been for a very long time to gain an advantage in the battlefield. But what's also interesting is that you can use augmented reality to gain advantage in your own personal battlefield and the challenges that, that you and I fight every single day. Bots are a key part of this, and you guys have probably been hearing more about bots lately. Um, bots are interesting because they're basically like a sub-module of AI, and they can combine multiple fragmented aspects of the user experience into a single task or a single operation and perform those on your behalf. And so this is a very interesting opportunity for, p for consumers because doors will start opening, you know, music will s your favorite music will start playing as you walk through your house, and temperatures will change, and basically the environment will adapt and conform to you and your needs. And that's a, that's a very exciting um, opportunity as we see a greater fusion between AR and AI. The key is to, to unsilo the local data that we're collecting from the multiple types of sensors and to serve that up uh, to, the, to the bots and to artificial intelligence so that they can, they can help us refine our life as we experience it moment to moment. Optics, of course, are going to continue to advance. Um, and Eventually, we're going to have implantable lenses that give us augmented reality, and that stuff's going to continue to continue at a breakneck pace we're, as we reach critical mass. The important aspect, though, is that we refine and reinvent the user experience so that the, the user interfaces that we create are really anti-user interfaces. They're user interfaces that they, they basically disappear into the natural fabric of our lives. So I'll close with a question. For those of you working on augmented reality technology, if you could have one superpower, what would it be, and how will you build it?